One of the most fascinating matchups in Cowboys history was the 1992 Super Bowl game against the Buffalo Bills. In this video, I'll delve into the captivating details of how Jimmy Johnson and the Dallas Cowboys skillfully dismantled one of the most remarkable offensive concepts in NFL history, the K-Offense. From 1989 to 1993, the Buffalo Bills were an offensive juggernaut. He's got time. End zone. Oh, yes. Touchdown. Kelly's pass. Caught. Touchdown. Jim Kelly, Andre Reid. Mark Logan, second down and seven. Kelly completes for the touchdown. Watch the throw. He will. He looks. He looks. He rolls right. He can go himself. Oh. Touchdown, and James Lofton were a trio who was unstoppable. Goes for Oliver. He's got a man. Touchdown. Lofton. On first down, a home run ball. Timing looks good. It's on target to James Lofton, and he goes in. Thurman Thomas was arguably the best running back in football, who predates a lot of modern running backs in today's league. They go to Thurman Thomas, and again with those remarkable change of pace moves. Look at him run inside the 15. He's not done inside the 10. The Bills' offensive strategy revolved around quick passes, exploiting the wider field. This proved especially effective against defensive schemes, such as the 46 defense, cover one, and man-to-man -man coverage. The Bills frequently used level routes to exploit mismatches in the secondary. That's what uh, the Eagles have to shore up that part of their defense. Andre Reid splits the difference. There are no flags. Zone runs, both inside and outside, were a key aspect of their running game. The hurry-up offense exhausted defensive lines mentally and physically. And they will go without a huddle again. And this is throwing off the timing of the Eagles' defense. They like to move people around a lot, but this is forcing them into more base coverages, and it is giving them some problems right now. No huddle offense, Andre Reid. Gotta be quick with these guys. Boy, no kidding. Kelly's ability to call his own plays contributed to the success of the no huddle offense. In a way, the K offense was reminiscent of the run and shoot concept that had been around since the late 70s. When Kelly was in the USFL, he ran the run and shoot offense with four set receivers. They have four wide receivers on the field almost every single play. Kelly with all the time in the world, and there's a good play. Instead of using four receivers like you would do in a run and shoot offense, Office of Coordinator Ted Markey Broda used three set receivers along with a single running back. He took out a receiver and replaced them with a tight end, making what we call today 811 personnel concept. Peyton Manning also utilized a similar offensive concept in Indianapolis in the late 90s and into the 2000s. In 1979, Jimmy Johnson joined Oklahoma State as head coach, with Dave Wanstead as his defensive coordinator. By 1980, their defense was ranked a horrible 107th in the country in points allowed. Oklahoma State, an undersized defense, had to employ a strategy of attacking the line of scrimmage and utilizing their speed and leverage to compete with larger opponents. Here we go, on the first shot. Come on, David, elbows in, let's do it right. It was go. a form. This involved having four down linemen each responsible for one gap and attacking that gap by engaging two blockers. Johnson's defense focused on playing aggressively without reading and using their quickness and leverage against the offensive line. This approach allowed the three linebackers behind the defensive line to quickly fill any vulnerable gap, while the defensive backs played a soft zone coverage on the back end. Their objective was to keep the play in front of them. Pass wants to throw. He's going deep. Just beyond the reach. Prevent easy touchdowns and give the linemen time to get to the quarterback. They were also aggressive in defending underneath throws after the pass was completed. Attack and reach the destination as fast as possible. They were aggressive, but they were also fast. No one on the defense ran the 40 slower than 4.7 seconds. 
Under Johnson and Wanstead, the defensive performance improved significantly, going from being ranked 107th in 1980 to 11th in the country in 1983. We led the nation in total turnovers, had a total of 53 turnovers caused by our defense, and that's because they were so aggressive. In 1984, Johnson took his defense to Miami and achieved dominance, contributing to the creation of the renowned U-Swag. Johnson's teams became known as the bad boys of college football, similar to the Pistons, the bad boys of the NBA. What set off the fight, Daniel Stubbs, even after the whistle, threw Todd Ellis down like it was AWA wrestling. I would think this would be a good time for Jimmy Johnson to show a little compassion here and just run the ball and there's no question about the outcome with 44 points on the board. Even though the youngsters want to play well, I think that uh, keeping it on the ground, let them try to score that way because the this game's over with. Toretta to throw it again. Over the middle. Touchdown, Miami. His innovative style and philosophy revolutionized college football. Number one, here's one of the ones that they'll be using this afternoon, a zone, a three deep zone, four backers, four man rush. The field in the deep is divided into thirds, one quarter each for the linebackers with a four man rush. First time you come up here and you're over aggressive, the quarterback's going to pull the ball out and throw the ball to the slot man and give us a big play. First thought, first thought with trips motion is pass. Okay, we'll either slide or we'll roll up to the trip side. Introducing the modern 4-3 upfield athletic linemen and small athletic linebackers. Before Johnson, bigger linebackers were considered better, focusing on physicality, strength, and power. Lanham is an animal all of a sudden. He's got to be on something. Uh, steroids. As his base front, he ran what you call an over front. With the nose tackle shaded weak side to the center, the defensive tackle shaded outside the strong side guard, the defensive end shaded outside the tight end, and the weak side end position outside the offensive tackle. Unlike Tom Landry's 43 scheme, where linebackers lined up just 1.5 yards back off the line of scrimmage, Johnson's linebackers backed off 4.5 yards back off the line of scrimmage. His defensive ends were converted athletic linebackers, while outside linebackers were converted safeties. This made Miami the fastest and most aggressive college defense in football. Oh, at the right side. Right here, comes right off of his block, right there, pursued right down on Ross. Nine yard line. Deflected and caught by Floyd, and then he drops it. In Johnson tore through the league with this game having a record of 52-9 with appearances in five New Year's Day Bowl games, including one national championship win in 1987 and one loss to Penn State in 1986 after going undefeated. In 1989, Jimmy Johnson replaced Tom Landry as the Cowboys coach, bringing along his defensive concept and seven assistant coaches who were on his staff in Miami. Johnson ruined with Jerry Jones at Arkansas, but he's a native Texan born in Port Arthur, and he always had a dream to coach the Cowboys. Friday night, when I realized that it could happen, I lay in bed and my wife Linda Kay said, uh, Jimmy, is this what you really want to do? It's what I have to do. Johnson brought the U-Swag to Dallas and gave them a confidence that hadn't been seen since the 70s. Johnson brings youth, enthusiasm, and high energy to the Cowboys. I was going to shake his hand and tell him good luck, etc. And, and he was ranting and raving at me because I hit his quarterback and I was blitzing him. Oh, I would have said something to Buddy, but he wouldn't stand on the field long enough. He put his big fat rear end into the dressing room. Obviously, with what we have done uh, at the University of Miami, we want to press the game defensively. Uh, we have that attacking style. We want to make sure that uh, we are a defensive team that makes things happen. Critics doubted his effectiveness against teams like the Bills and 49ers, who excelled in both the run and passing. The critics were proven wrong, but it took time in finding the right players. Johnson traded for Charles Helley, who converted from outside linebacker to defensive end. He also drafted speedy linebackers like Dixon Edwards and Garfrey Miles, and had Ken Norton, an already talented linebacker on the roster. Johnson drafted two cornerbacks who excelled in zone defenses, like Kevin Smith. I think 
our defense will win the game for us. And Larry Brown, one of the most important additions to the defense was Darren Woodson, an exceptional athlete who could play linebacker and safety. In 1992, the Bills emerged as the next year's champion with their dominant offense. They had the top two offense in football for the past two seasons, making two consecutive Super Bowl appearances. All signs pointed towards this potentially being the Bills season. Meanwhile, Dallas also had an impressive record, but there were doubts about their young team and whether it was too early for them to win a championship. Despite already shocking the world by defeating the number one offense in the league, the 49ers, the Cowboys still had to face the second ranked offense in football. So the, the Sage leader of the Bills heading west. Let's go to O.J. Simpson. Oh, we'd like to win, but uh, you know, you have to go and prepare for either Dallas or San Francisco. It's going to be a tough one, but hey, it's our third trip. Just go out there and know what your priorities are. Have some fun doing it. Just a few years ago, doubts were raised about Johnson's defensive concepts, but in his third season, they had made it this far. This was Johnson's chance to cement his legacy by winning the Super Bowl and proving his critics wrong by beating two of the best offenses back-to-back -back on the biggest stages in sports. The Bills started the game with Kelly as their quarterback and sticking to their usual 11 personnel concept. Jim Kelly, the quarterback, the fast break football offense, the no huddle, the K gun, they call it in Buffalo. Which consisted of three wide receivers, a single back, and a tight end. Dallas opted for a nickel formation to start the game, choosing a 4 2 5 defense over a 4 3. This decision allowed for more speed on the field and an extra player in the box creating a hybrid 4-3 defense while still keeping four defensive backs on the field. Well, we're going to find out quick what Dallas plans to do with this hurry-up offense. They normally use 18 or 19 guys defensively, six or seven defensive backs, and they're starting with the nickel. The Cowboys employed what they called a mismatch zone concept, where defenders played in a zone until a player entered their zone, and then their assignments shifted to man coverage. However, Johnson would occasionally switch to a soft zone where defensive backs either followed the receiver or stayed put. This was an effective strategy against the Bills' K offense. In the K offense, the receivers had the freedom to adjust their routes based on the defense's actions. So you needed smart receivers who could read defenses. But the mismatch zone concept posed a problem for the receiver because the DBs wasn't in a set alignment. I mean, they appeared to be but they had the option to stay put or attack. In this play, James Washington appears to be in zone coverage, which typically favors the receiver running towards the sidelines or outside the numbers, which is what the Bills tight end was doing. However, Washington is actually in man coverage, catching both the tight end and Kelly off guard. The tight end trips and falls while Kelly throws the ball into Washington's hands. If you pay close attention, you can see the tight end try to change his route away from Washington but he slips due to the unexpected coverage, and the blitz forces Kelly to throw the ball before his receiver can adjust to the route. In Johnson's defensive strategy, they may allow underneath routes, but rarely permit deep throws. So the most important receiver on this play was no doubt the tight end. The Jimmy Jones touchdown was another impressive defensive stop. Unlike the previous play with James Washington, Dallas is now in a soft traditional zone defense. However, the linebacker positioning four yards from the line of scrimmage makes it challenging for Kelly to focus on his main read, the tight end. Goffrey's jam disrupts the tight end, throwing off Kelly's rhythm. Kelly attempts to target his second read, Thurman Thomas, on a screen out, but Charles Helly sacks him before he can make the pass, causing a fumble. This exemplifies Johnson's concept down to the T. Using zone defense to give the defensive line an opportunity to attack the quarterback. One of the most iconic plays in NFL history was the goal line stand. Reed had just caught a beautiful slant. Over the middle, the Reed. Reed running freely. Gets a block. Andre Reed to the four yard line. This started a series of plays when Ken Norton single handedly kept Buffalo out of the end zone for three straight plays. In this play, Thomas has the edge. It should be a touchdown, but watch Norton smell it out and then flush him back into traffic. But, it's Thomas. but the next play will put him in Super Bowl conversations forever. It's third and goal, and the Bills are in an I-form offense with a fullback lead. It's Davis this time who gets the ball. It looks like it's a short touchdown this time, 
But Norton comes out of nowhere and stops Davis at the point of attack, driving him back behind the line of scrimmage. Oh. What a tackle by Ken Norton! It wasn't an accident that Norton was at the right place at the right time. Norton was four yards off the line of scrimmage. This gave him time to react to the play without getting blocked. It was all about leverage and space. By the time Norton collided with Davis, he was already running down full steam. Norton had the leverage. This was 50% Norton and 50% scheme. The next play, Dallas intercepted the pass on fourth down. And it is a pass. Intercepted, they won't even get the field goal. This defense was a blazer in this game. Elite athletes in every position. They swarm to the ball so incredibly. This a speed burning defense, number one in the NFL. Haley ran a 4-5 with the 49ers, so still he either ran a 4-5 or 4-6. Norton and Edwards ran four fives. He's got a big assignment too, covering Thurman Thomas out of the backfield. There aren't many linebackers in the league who have the speed and quickness to do that. There was speed everywhere. Linebackers and safeties were just too athletic and too fast. Edwards and Norton both run in the four fives, the 40. The moment a Bills receiver caught a pass, it was an immediate tackle, and it happened all game long. Dallas ended up beating the Bills 52-17. They had a staggering nine turnovers and two defensive touchdowns. It was one of the greatest defensive performances in NFL history and helped establish the NFL dynasty. They go back to big day as Super Bowl champions. Dallas 52, Buffalo 17. If you want me to break down more historical Dallas games, let me know in the comment section. Until next time, make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.